At the time of this video, the Yankees have the best record in the American League, and it's expected that they're going to be all in at the trade deadline. They've only got Juan Soto for the remainder of this season before he becomes a free agent, and Brian Cashman only has this year and next year on his contract, and he wants another championship. Here's a look at 10 players the Yankees might be considering as a midseason acquisition. If you have any other suggestions, leave them in the comments. Let's begin with Garrett Crochet. He is a 6'6 left-handed pitcher with the Chicago White Sox who has a funky delivery and even funkier stuff. He's mostly been a relief pitcher in his career, but the White Sox transformed him into a starting pitcher this year. And as a 24-year-old, through 13 starts, he's got a 0.93 whip, so less than a hit per inning. And he ranks in the upper percentiles of almost every stat cast category. He is absolutely filthy. Way more than a strikeout per inning. He features an upper 90s fastball. He's got a good slider. He's got a cutter. And he's got a changeup. And he would be a fantastic addition to the Yankees' bullpen. I don't think he's going to pitch the entire season as a starter because he's never been a starter before, so his innings are going to be limited. He's already thrown 69 innings at the time of this video, but he's coming back from an injury. He missed all of 2022, and he barely pitched at all in 2023. He's probably going to end up in the bullpen at some point this season. Why not let it be for the Yankees? Now, he will not be cheap. He is going to command a big-time prospect because he's a big-time pitcher. Number 9 from the 2023 National League Champions, Paul Seawald. The Diamondbacks are not off to the greatest start this year, and there's a chance that they could fall out of the playoff race, although they understand as well as anybody that if you get hot in the postseason, you can make it all the way to the World Series. But they might be willing to trade Paul Seawald, who missed a large chunk of the season with an injury, but he's back, he's healthy, and he knows how to pitch. Last year he had 80 strikeouts in 60 and two-thirds innings, Hasn't racked up a ton of appearances this year, just seven innings. He has four saves. He's given up one run so far at the time of this video. But he's a guy who has two pitches, basically, a four-seam fastball and a sweeper, and he uses them very effectively and very deceptively. I think he would be a nice pickup if the Diamondbacks fall out of it and are willing to unload him. Number eight. Jazz Chisholm Jr. of the Miami Marlins, who are already unloading players. They traded Luis Arise. Jazz Chisholm, he was on the cover of MLB The Show just a couple of years ago, and he is a good little player. He's about a 250 hitter for his career, 247, but he's still 26 years old, so he's in his prime. He's got a little bit of pop. He's got a lot of speed. He's in the 97th percentile of base running value. He also barrels the ball up quite a bit. And he can play second base, he can play center field, he's even played some shortstop at the big league level. And he might be a nice pickup. And he probably wouldn't be terribly expensive because the Marlins are unloading right now and they're probably not going to re-sign him. I think he would be a nice fit for the Yankees. You might even see the power numbers go up a little bit playing at Yankee Stadium. Number seven feels like a Yankee move and it feels like a Brian Cashman move. Andrew Chafin, who the Yankees could have signed a couple of years ago, but they passed on. He signed with the Detroit Tigers, did not have a great season last year and isn't having a great season this year, but he's got really great stuff. He's one of those guys that the Yankees might be able to unlock and have him pitch a little differently and just exponentially increase his success. I like his breaking stuff. His fastball, he doesn't throw very often. It's only 92 miles an hour, but he's got a good slider and a good sinker. Breaking ball run value well above average, and he could be a good left-on-left -left kind of pitcher. Do not be surprised if the Yankees go after Andrew Chafin at the deadline. Number six, and currently pitching with the St. Louis Cardinals, who got off to a really bad start but have played better recently, Andrew Kitteridge. He's a right-handed relief pitcher with a slider-sinker combination. 94 mile an hour fastball, a little bit below league average, but he's excellent at getting swings and misses and getting chases out of the strike zone. He's in the 99th percentile of getting chases out of the strike zone. He's also well above average at getting ground balls, although he does give up his fair share of hard hit balls. I think that uh, he would be a nice little pickup and he probably wouldn't be too expensive, although the Cardinals are in it right now. And they're like the Yankees. They don't like to break it down and sell midseason, but they might if they fall out of it. 
Number five is a fan favorite, a personal favorite, and could be either realistic or unrealistic depending on how you choose to look at it. I'm choosing to look at this as a realistic possibility. The Rangers are currently under 500. Now, they're within striking distance of first place, and they won the World Series last year. But let's say they have a bad June or a bad July, and they fall out of it. Maybe they fall 10 games back, 12 games back, and they start unloading some pieces. One of the first pieces that they would unload is a 39-year-old effective relief pitcher, and I think the Yankees would definitely be in on Robertson because he has won in New York, because he is immune to pressure, and because he's a fan favorite. And I would personally love this move. David Robertson is one of my favorite relief pitchers of all time. Number four is a stat cast darling from the aforementioned St. Louis Cardinals, Ryan Helsley, who's having a very effective season and features just some dynamic stuff. He has got a really good slider. He's got a good curveball. His fastball is 99 plus miles an hour. He is deadly and he is a difference maker in the postseason. Now, would they trade him? Probably not unless they fall completely out of it. And would he be cheap? Absolutely not, because every team is going to want a piece of Ryan Helsey. But hey, look, the Yankees are trying to win. They're going to be all in, and I'm here for it. I would love to add Ryan Helsey to the Yankees bullpen. Number three is former top Red Sox prospect and current member of the Chicago White Sox, 28-year-old Michael Kopech, who has really, really good stuff, an electric fastball that averages 98.9 miles an hour. Hitters hit just 190 off him at the time of this video. Now, he doesn't have much of a breaking ball to speak of. He's got a slider. He's got a cutter. Both of them are below league average. And he does walk a lot of guys. He's in the ninth percentile of walks. But wouldn't that be perfect for the Yankees to go out and get a former top Red Sox prospect, make a couple of tweaks with Matt Blake in the pitching lab, and turn him into the best relief pitcher in the history of baseball? Well, it probably wouldn't go that far. But he could be a nice pickup for the Yankees with the right tutelage from Matt Blake. Number two is a left-handed infielder that's been on the Yankees' radar for last couple of years, really, Ryan McMahon of the Colorado Rockies. He's had a couple of decent years, never been a guy who hits for much average, though he's doing so this year. Last year he hit 240, and at the time of this video, he's hitting 282. StatCast loves him. He's got a lot of red on his StatCast chart. Spray chart is all over the place. He hits the ball to all fields. Now, he's not very fast. He's in the 20th percentile, but he can play second base. He can play third base. He can probably play a little bit of first base, too. Be interesting to see what the Yankees would do with him if they picked him up. But his bat would definitely play. He hits the ball in the air, and I think his power would play up at Yankee Stadium. I think he would be a fan favorite, too. He's a good player. And number one is someone the entire league is going to be salivating over should the A's decide to trade him. Relief pitcher Mason Miller, who is quite frankly one of the best pitchers I've ever seen. His fastball sits at 101 miles an hour. He's got an 87 mile an hour slider. He's got a split finger that he doesn't throw very often, but he is just filthy. Look at his stat cast numbers and he is best in the league in six categories and in the 90th percentile and a few others. So he is an absolute stud and at just 25 years old, got a lot of control. So that's gonna make his price very, very high. I do think it would cost somebody like Spencer Jones to get Mason Miller and it would be a tough decision for Brian Cashman whether or not he wants to do something like that. But he is an absolute difference maker. I don't think his arm is going to hold up in the long run. You never see anybody other than maybe Aroldis Chapman maintain that kind of velocity for an extended period of time. Nolan Ryan, I guess, probably one or two others. But maybe he is a generational pitcher. And maybe you can get him for a prospect. But the A's don't need a closer. They're not going to the playoffs. And this could be their chance to put together a young core of prospects for that next stadium, wherever it may be.